This is Digma Defi, a split ergonomic keyboard. The most interesting keyboard I had so far and here is what I like and don't like about this keyboard. For disclaimer and for my wife, I didn't buy this keyboard. It was sent to me by Digma to make some Instagram posts, but they had no idea that I will do YouTube videos. So my opinion is my own. I've been using it as my main keyboard for last two weeks and the most asked question on Instagram was, is that hard to adapt to typing on it? I will say no, but there are some other pros and cons that I would like to mention. I'm not fast typer and yeah, back in my days in schools we didn't learn touch typing so I never learned to do that properly. And this keyboard forces me to touch type and I like that. But yeah, keep this in mind, if you do not touch type, it will take some more time to adapt. So getting back on my regular but slow typing speed wasn't too hard. It took about a week to adapt and now I am touch typing for about 200 words per minute. Okay, maybe not exactly 200 words per minute, but fast enough to get paid as a programmer. Okay, let's talk better about ergonomics. So, do ergonomic keyboards help to prevent or fix RSI issues? I will say yes, they do help. I had light but annoying wrist pain back in my product management job and switching to Microsoft School keyboard back at time fixed that issue for me. But you know what helps better? Get a pair of those. <laughs> those are helping and also And this, exercises helps to keep RSI away, but you have to start exercising before RSI hits your wrists and you start feeling pain. If you are feeling pain already, it's kind of too late. So get some kettlebell or dumbbells or go to the gym and exercise that really helps. But of course, exercises, stretching and ergonomic keyboard combination works even better. So. Again, recommending to get one of those or any other ergonomic keyboard. I just like mechanical keyboards, but any split keyboard will improve your typing posture. I used this Logitech keyboard as my iPad keyboard for many years. It's kind of nice. It's very small, light, works from a pair of batteries forever. And yeah, it's easy to carry around. But if I touch type on this properly, it is way too small to type comfortably. Regular size keyboards are a little bit better, but still not even close to the comfort you can get using the split keyboard. Also, you have extra space in the middle to put touchpad, mouse or coffee mug. I think this is good enough argument to get split keyboard already, but there are a few more. This keyboard is ortholinear. All the keys are easier to reach because they are in straight lines and finger movement is more natural. Regular keyboards have staggered keys that's legacy from typewriters. That pattern obviously is not comfortable for our hands. In my opinion, and I feel like that, that this layout is way more comfortable for typing. Also, we have wrist pads here on this specific keyboard. Those are attached by magnets. Magnets are not super strong, but strong enough to keep them on place. Built-in tenting rises keyboard up to 60 degrees with many steps in between. I don't use it, but yeah, you can go crazy, especially if you have something like a tennis elbow, which I had, and that wasn't comfortable. Then it was way more comfortable to keep my hands without trying to kind of force them in this position. The thumb cluster is amazing. I miss it whenever I'm switching to the MacBook and working away from the desk. On regular keyboard, we are using Pinky for many actions and both thumbs are used for space only. That's kind of <laughs> waste of power and energy, right? So all the enter, delete and so on buttons usually on regular keyboard are hit by Pinky. It's not easy and you have to stretch it a lot. My setup for thumb cluster is relatively simple. So basically I'm using, that's my enter, control, space, shift, and here I just have command, alt, and control kind of buttons. So that's that. This is really simple layout, but so I can reach those keys with my thumb without kind of leaving my fingers from the minor row of the 
keyboard that's very comfortable hard to explain but super easy and especially when i'm kind of typing in latvian i have to kind of type special symbols and so on so it's easy to hit alt and button for special symbols without kind of leaving uh, hands from the keyboard uh, you may ask where are F round and arrows and so on. So actually there are multiple layers in this keyboard. I'm just hitting this yellow key and then I'm getting my arrows on the keyboard. And of course you can change and reprogram all the keys, everything as, as whatever you like. I have only two layers, but you can add here. I don't know. I'm using two, I have more. By default, there are three layers. I'm using, I will say two of them and uh, you can add up to 10 layers here and make different configurations and so on. You can set multiple layers, super keys, macros, but I would like to get my typing speed up first before playing with another level of complications. So I'm not adding any other layers here. And as soon as you're switching in between those layers, you see that uh, colors of the keyboard are changing as well. Basically you are getting highlights for all the different configs. RGB is highly configurable. You can change the color for each key specifically and for every light here around in the under keyboard glow. That's super cool. In many keyboards that RGB lighting looks cheap, but Digma managed to make it very functional and even premium looking. I really like how it looks and I'm using RGB, this keyboard with RGB on. So good work with that RGB lighting. Also software that's obviously is some electron up, but it looks quite well. You can kind of do your super key editing here, macro editing, update firmware and so on. Basically it works. I didn't have any problems with it. Uh, yeah, it doesn't look like native app, but I don't know. For keyboard management, who cares? The wireless connection is amazing with no lag and no missed case strokes, and it just works. Even if the keyboard is sleeping with lights off, I'm just hitting one key and it is already registered. There is kind of no lag, nothing works really well. I'm using this dongle for connection that comes... Uh, Basically with keyboard, it works without the problems, so I didn't bother even to try the Bluetooth. And of course, on wireless, the keyboard works from the batteries. In my use case, I will say it works for about two to three days without charging. And yeah, when you're charging, you're just adding cables to the dongle, dongle into the keyboard and yeah of course it works during the charging from dongle as well i found myself often using keyboard connected because when you connect keyboard for charging it is just convenient to leave it connected forever so if you see yourself using keyboard connected most of the time then maybe you can buy keyboard without uh, wireless support and that will be a little bit cheaper. Talking about money, keyboard is not cheap. This configuration and with enchantment kit, the price was 625 bucks. So <laughs> that's something, right? But the price is in the range I could expect for the product. Those ergonomic split keyboards, those they are expensive 600 that is something that uh, you should expect buying something like that the keyboard has hot swappable switches as you may expect at this price point i choose Kalix silent brown tactical switches Maybe I will swap uh, to different switches later. You know, that's just what you do when you have a mechanical keyboard. You have to switch uh, switches time to time. But are there any cons? I just said, I think I said only good things about keyboard so far. I will say yes. I will say that keyboard weight is the one aspect to mention. It is, it is built from aluminum. It's quite big and of course it's heavy. It comes with travel case and it still is more travel friendly compared with Kinesis keyboard, for example, but the case is quite big and bulky. I bought this, uh, it was Illy, I guess Illy 58 keyboard, which is lighter and uh, smaller and you can really fit it in the pocket if you, if you want, but it feels too high. 
for typing a little bit and also it feels too plasticky on the desk so I never kind of really used that keyboard for work. Therefore I will say that bigger size with wrist rests and more stability can be benefit as well when you're using a keyboard at home at the desk but I doubt I will travel with this keyboard. But the thing that really bothers me is shortcuts and muscle memory. Those are big ones for me. Before I started to use this keyboard, I didn't even know how many shortcuts I'm using daily. For example, in Xcode, of course, you're doing this command B to build project, uh, similar things basically for running uh, up on simulator, for running tests and so on and so on. Those commands are not challenging, but if I like to select function or variable and then hit shift control command F to see where it is used in the project, I'm lost on this keyboard. <laughs> this could be solved by macros and uh, super keys, but that is relearning again. Also, when I'm editing videos on the on the regular keyboard, I'm just using all the time that uh, control and those square brackets to trim the clips in Final Cut. Here, it's kind of easy to remember where is a control and then hit that square bracket, but it is kind of, I don't know, it's two hands out of the reach on this keyboard that is just one hand and two square brackets. It's basically muscle memory. It's you have to relearn those things. I was thinking that typing will be hard, but just typing emails, whatever. And that's quite easy. Shortcuts, keys located in different positions, that's much harder. In the first week, I switched back to the regular keyboard often to type faster and was very <laughs> short in my messages and emails when I was typing on this keyboard. That changed quickly and I started to feel more confident touch typing on this keyboard. So typing is more comfortable on this keyboard for me because of this ortholinear layout. Thumb keys already missing that. After, let's say, two weeks of regular using, I'm missing thumb keys on the regular keyboard. But uh, for shortcuts, I'm just keeping my laptop open next to me and I'm hitting those shortcuts on the laptop and then switching back to, the, to this keyboard for work. If you didn't try any mechanical keyboard yet, you definitely have to try a mechanical keyboard. And uh, of course, I have a video about that somewhere here. Check that video out, just that will be video why you should try mechanical keyboard and uh, do your research but be careful because mechanical keyboard is a deep rabbit hole and you might get a new quite expensive hobby or even addiction to mechanical keyboards and for ergonomic keyboard i think this is really good candidate to be your ergonomic keyboard as well that concept to have those new keyboards with those thumb clusters, ortholinear, more more comfortable layout for mind keys. I think this is the future because those old keyboards, that is that is just legacy from typewriters. I don't understand why we are still kind of using mostly those keyboards.